Tammy was on the phone with Mbodo, the loan shark, who threatened to kill her if she refused to pay back the money he borrowed her. Tammy starts pleading on the phone with a panicked face. Mbodo, I will pay you for your money, please. Just give me more time. Business is slow now, Mbodo. Mbodo reacts by shouting on her. Tammy, I'll give you seven days to come up with my balance. If not, you will not like the next line of my action. He dropped the call. With a wave of panic and fear, Tammy calls her friend Mena, who comes over to her house, and she narrates what happened. She had entered trouble just because she collected some money from Umbodo to help with her father's hospital bills, and eventually, her father did not make it alive. He died. She starts to shed tears. Mena consoles her friend, telling her they will find a way to raise the huge amount of money that she owes Mbodo, even if it means selling her own car and her properties. Later that day, Mena comes up with an idea that since she lives in a big house, she could find a flatmate to share the apartment with her in order to raise the fund. At first, Tammy hesitated as she likes her privacy. But because of the situation at hand, she had no choice. Mena's cousin, who was in need of an apartment urgently before he could travel out of the country for greener pastures, came the next day evening to Tammy's house as her new flatmate. As Tammy heard a knock on her door, she went to open it, only to find a dwarf at her doorstep. Immediately irritated, she shut the door against the man. Tammy reached out for her phone and called her friend Mena, who confirmed that it was her cousin brother that was at the door that she should show some respect and courtesy and open the door for the man. With rage in her, Tammy opened the door and the man came in introducing himself as Anthony. But she walked out immediately, leaving Anthony alone. Anthony sat in the sitting room waiting for her to return. It was later that night that she came back to the house, only to find Anthony lying down in her couch. Immediately, she went to get a cup of water to sprinkle over his face. She started screaming at him. What's the meaning of this? Why will you sit on my couch with your smelling body? Anthony apologized and it was because he was tired. He did not know his room. Tammy led him into his room and before she left, she gave him a list of her house rules he must adhere to. If not, he will be evicted from the house. She hissed as she walked away. The next morning, Anthony went to the kitchen to prepare himself breakfast. When Tammy woke up and went to the kitchen, she started screaming at Anthony and warned him that never in his life will he ever touch any of her properties. Anthony replied her, but I am your flatmate. I paid my rent. She continued screaming that if he cannot abide with her rules, he should come and pack out immediately and she will get a refund. After some days, Tammy was on a call with her boyfriend. She asked him if she could come around to visit him, but her boyfriend lied that he was not in town. He traveled. So... Instead, she went to visit her friend Mina and she complained bitterly to Mina that she was not comfortable with the idea of having a flatmate, let alone a dwarf as a flatmate, that she gets irritated at the sight of Anthony. But Mina advised her to be calm, that she should take out time to get to know Anthony, that he's a loving, caring guy, that she should forget about his size, that he's good to a fault. As they both went to have lunch in a restaurant, Tammy saw someone that looks like her boyfriend, Uzo. So quickly, she approached him to ask him what he was doing there, only for her to see him on bended knees, proposing to a lady, and people around gave a chair. She was so disappointed that she ran off, leaving her friend, Mina, all by herself. He wouldn't leave her room for days, and this got her flatmate worried. Anthony checked up on her regardless of how badly she treated him. She cooked for her 
and did her laundry. One fateful day, Mbodo the lone shark stormed her house with his boys. They dragged her out and were about to beat her when Anthony came in, rushing in, and stopped them as I challenging Mbodo. Guy, is this how to treat a lady? What if she was your sister? Mbodo angrily explained how much he was being owed by Tammy and that he is not leaving the place unless he gets his money. Antomini demanded for his account number and made the transfer. He even went ahead to add interest, and Anthony demanded Mbodo to leave the premises with his boys. Anthony reached out to Tammy and helped her out from the floor. They both started talking. Tammy was so shocked and surprised how Anthony cleared up her death, not regarding how bad she treated him. The next morning, she went to knock at Anthony's door with a peace offering meal. She apologized on how she badly behaved and offered that they become friends. Anthony smiled and accepted her apology. During one of their conversations, Tammy found out that Anthony was a wealthy young man who made his first millions at the age of 20 and has multiple chains of businesses globally. They began doing things together, cooking together, watching film together, relaxing together. Before you know it, Tammy found herself falling in love with her dwarf flatmate.